Look, I'm very grateful and very glad to be here. And um, the topics that we're going to be talking about and which I want to talk to you about particularly um, are very near and dear to my heart, but they're also very near and dear to everything, right? The way in which we basically communicate, the way that online, the way that social, the way that mobile has infused all of us in every facet of our lives. It doesn't matter what age you are, what your role is in life, what your job is, we are all communicating all the time. And science, technology, engineering are all behind that. Um, fundamentally, I just believe in innovation. Right? I believe in entrepreneurship. Um, I believe in imagination. I believe in invention. Um, and we're going to talk uh, more about you know, my particular path in that. But fundamentally, is that the quest that this organization and that science and technology and engineering and innovation and imagination play in the world is part and parcel to our entire existence as people, right? We've always been thinking. We're always solving problems, right? We're always trying to figure out a way to do something bigger, better, faster, more efficient, more innovative. Um, and I particularly believe that entrepreneurship and innovation is so important to this because if we're not thinking to doing, if we're not solving problems, right, we're going to end up trapped. Right? And what I found, I've, I've lived here in Australia for four years. I was lucky enough to marry an Aussie. Um, and I brought her over to the US, but there was a clock on that. Uh, so <laughs> you can take the girl out of Australia, but you can't take the Australia out of the girl. Um, and, and, that's, and that's wonderful. And one of the best things I ever did in my life was go through a personal innovation, imagination, and, and entrepreneurship cycle by moving to Australia. Even though I've been coming here for a long time. Um, but moving countries right, is about innovating. It's about having imagination. And since I've gotten here, what I've been incredibly thrilled, impressed, and enthralled by is the quality of Australian <coughs> entrepreneurship, innovation, and imagination. Right? And it's hard to put a label like you know, Aussie entrepreneurs. I mean, you're either an entrepreneur or you're not. Right? And that's OK. Um, but I think that. I've gotten frustrated and I've gotten very cluey now on the state of how Australia thinks of itself as an entrepreneurship and innovation culture. Right? Tall poppy syndrome and we're way down here and all this. And I want to celebrate the fact that the quality of entrepreneurship and innovation, the quality of thinking, the quality of doing in this country is on par, if not better than any place I've ever been. And you know, none of you guys in, in this room and none of all of the folks online need to hear another yank talk about stuff like this. But I live here. You know, I'm the only one in my family with an accent. You know, so, and I'm here to stay. Um, and I love it here. And I find that the way in which this country and its culture embrace innovation and how, yes, you know, we've, we in Australia have, for the last umpteen years, uh, kind of pinned our entire business psyche on stuff we dig out of the ground or stuff we build on top of it, right? But as mining and real estate and all of these booms, right, continue to grow, and as we look at them from a past point of view as monolithic industries that we have cycles of innovation towards. But you know what? The mining industry is filled with innovation and filled with entrepreneurship and filled with science and filled with technology and filled with engineering. You know? And one of the things that I want to challenge this room and the people in it and this country to embrace is that if we are not looking as a country and a culture from the government to the billionaires to the private individual on how we can celebrate and support science, technology, and entrepreneurship. Well, you know, everybody talks about the miming booms going down. Well, watch it go down really fast when all of a sudden we start automating and putting robots in mines. And we're having to buy them from the Yanks, right? Because there's no engineers here. We're, you know, we're exporting our mine share here. We're exporting our best and our brightest because of the myth of Silicon Valley and the myth of Wall Street and all of those things. I mean, I run a company that built a platform that allows anyone with a website, anyone with a Facebook page, anywhere in the world at any time to become a broadcaster. So imagine if you could become Foxtel. Yourself, your company, your entity, right? You have people coming to your website. 
You'd like to maybe say something to them because you're an expert. You're an expert in science. You're an expert in physics. You're an expert in technology. You're an expert in cars, right? Well, there's not enough of that stuff on Foxtel. We all have it, 200 channels, nothing on, right? But you, got, you have something to say. Well, my company does that, right? And I'm not here to pitch my company. I'm here to say that the company was built by two classically trained professional French horn players. French horn players, OK? Not Silicon Valley guys who worked at Google and then worked at Apple and then decided to solve a problem for Hollywood. These were French horn players who got frustrated that there was no classical music on television. So rather than whinge about it, right, one of them happened to be a computer hacker, like literally a hacker, you know, not some software engineer who went to Stanford, you know, knows all the different code, right? He just kind of started tinkering. And a year later, he built a box. You stick the internet on one side and a camera on the other, and you're live streaming into the internet. And he went out and went, well, let's go get some concerts. So he did, right? Built in Australia. Okay, homegrown, home-built, computer hacker, French horn player. Innovation, imagination, right? I came along years later, right? They've been up and running and all this kind of stuff and couldn't figure some stuff out and pivot, pivot, pivot the way that all entrepreneurship and all science, you know, science is about experiment, right? It's about validation. Like, does it work? Okay, my God, I've, you know, I've, I've discovered a new subatomic particle. Can you replicate it, all right? Well, these guys had a commercial replication problem because a French horn player, hacker, Right? It wasn't his job to necessarily be the guy who commercializes it. Well, I saw it, you know, and I worked at Amazon for four years, and I worked at Facebook, and I worked at a movie studio, and I know a lot of stuff about this. So I saw this stuff, and I went, you're kidding. You're, does, it, does it really work? So I validated it. I went and replicated it. Went and called up a bunch of friends in the US, you know, all of these big-brained engineers that went to Stanford, and they all said, where did you find this? Nobody's built this. And I said, yeah, it's a bunch of French horn players in Australia. <laughs> right? And they're like, you're kidding. Right? Point is, point is, there are French horn players in Australia building stuff. There are kids building stuff. There are people that you know, maybe you, Maybe your partners, maybe your kids, maybe your crazy uncle that are building stuff here, right, that has global relevance, that's going to change the world. And I firmly believe that Australia needs to get behind this. You know, we need to celebrate this and support this. I mean, and it's not just charity and government. It's a responsibility of the billionaires and the private sector to get behind this because their bottom line depends on it, right? Because the way in which we communicate, right, we're communicating all the time. And yes, and I'm not just talking about Twitter and Facebook and mobile phones. There's underlying information architecture. There's systems down there that it doesn't matter what it is. Yes, Twitter's really popular and Facebook's really popular. But the same stuff that runs Twitter and Facebook could run global collaborations with scientists coming up with a new drug to cure cancer right? that could help mining companies here to really, really increase the efficiency of their supply chain so it's not just about digging stuff up and shipping it over to China. Right? And I'm not going to get into that because I'm not an expert, just an observation. Um, I just believe that this country is uniquely poised to really celebrate its own innovation and its own imagination as a gateway between East and West. Right? Talk about communication. Right, well, Facebook got kicked out of China. Right, Google can't get in. And everybody says, oh, Facebook's the biggest thing in the world. But have you seen, Ten have you seen Tensing? You know, and TomTom Tom and QQ and RenRen Ren and all of these? I mean, there's like billions of people on those things. Right? Billions. But if it's not Silicon Valley and it's not Wall Street and it's not America, well, then it doesn't count. Right, well, that's insane. That's completely insane. And I love the fact that Australia is a Western nation that's also an Asian nation. Right? Australia is the only place in the world that everybody likes Australians. Like, everybody likes Australians. <laughs> Try to do business in Asia. I get on the phone, and like, nope, you're a Yank. Right? Aussie gets on the phone, and they go, come on in. Right? It's an amazing 
fact of your culture. It's amazing fact of your ability to communicate. And what I think is so exciting right now is that there are people who are able to tinker with science and technology and engineering. You know, they can build something in their backyard. They can make something happen overnight. But you don't have to ship it off. Right? You don't have to ship it off. You can grow. You can grow in the US and grow in Europe and all that kind of stuff. But my big point, and then I'm going to ask Paul to get into the, the nuts and bolts, which is about talking to you guys. But um, you know, I, I live here, and I feel like I'm becoming part of this community. And for that, I'm very grateful. And I think that one, you know, one of the ways in which I can say really how communication works, even from Australia, you know, my mother lives in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's, you know, it's a zillion kilometers away in so many time zones it makes my head spin. Well, thank God for Facebook, because otherwise she would have a much tougher time seeing her grandson grow up. Right? There's so much benevolence. There's so much good. There's so much things that communication can do. Um, and I'm seeing it built here. You know, I'm seeing unbelievable things happen here. And I really want to be encouraging and celebratory of the fact that this is such a strong country in what is important in the ways of science and engineering and technology. And communications is going to be the key. There's no more tyranny of distance. You know, my company just put 250 movies into Facebook two days ago for pay-per-view sale. It's never been done, right? Two French horn players from Melbourne. Right? Um, so I believe in entrepreneurship, and I believe in innovation, and I believe in imagination. And I'd like to really open it up to you guys so that we can have a dialogue. Not, you know, not like question and answer, but let's, you know, let's experiment on things. Let's talk about things that are going on in your lives, with your businesses, and your careers right now. And maybe we can help each other out. So I'm looking forward to the next stage. Is that good? Is that enough? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.